Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. Now, I hope your welding is progressing and your theory is, uh, has started to increase with, the, with your welding knowledge. I know most of it is practical, however, we're introducing theory as much as we can and I want to talk about equipment as much as possible because that is the other part of the welding. We will be covering more joints and then getting on with welding a chassis. However, I need to cover the aspect of the in and the outs of electrics. Now, I'm no electrician, so I've had the electrician come in and fit me a 32 amp plug with a socket on the wall. Now, this cost me 95 pounds um, British money, sterling, and I got in with the deal a uh, 16 meter cable now it's, apparently it's not the right color but it's okay for domestic use now with the power weld xtt 202p which we have i just want to show you here that the um input current maximum amperage is 18 amps now okay in the rcd box that we have in the house we can put a 20 amp fuse in and that's fine that's what the electrician actually did he also pointed out that next to the meter we have an input and there is an output to the flat above this one and he warned me not to take any power takeoffs from this because the voltage is uh, quite incredible supply from this. Right, so we were looking at the Powerweld XTS and this is a 160 amp manual metal arc inverter with a lift TIG. And what I want to point out here is that you have to be careful when looking at the specifications. We looked at the duty cycle before. And now if we look at this point here, it shows that it requires a 30 amp input max, which uh, is different to the larger machine, basically because the transformer is a little bit inferior. Right, so again, if we look at the... Um, Oxford one we're here, I've got my eye on this at the moment. We're looking at a fuse rating slow blow between 13 and 16 amp. And it has a little asterisk on there and it doesn't show any more information, but I would presume this is rated at 16 amp maximum. In uh, your circuit breaker box, you should be able to have uh, 32 amps easily wired in there with a circuit breaker rating that. And as I said, the uh, XTT202 is 18 amps max input so we've had a 20 amp circuit breaker fitted to it now this um power weld one okay the xt202 which i said demands less current okay i actually found that this went up to 170 amps maximum i'm a bit confused here and i need to investigate why it would only do 170 amps max on ac Anyway, the electrician asked me to uh, test the welder on max, and that's all I could get was 170 amps, and I just burnt a rod straight into this steel to see if it would blow a fuse. It didn't, so we can be assured that we're going to do some more welding. Thanks to a friend's comment on Facebook, he actually noted that the uh, cable is a 110 voltage cable, but it's sufficient and will carry the amperage load that we need for the welder. And I'll just say, always store your cables away when you're finished with them, keep them in good condition. Now, when you have problems with cables, it's because they're chafed or they're chopped or you've dropped something on them this case it is chafed and i just want to bring your attention to a potential hazard here which uh, could be a short the the casing has come off here the rest of the cable is okay however when we look in here you have three wires okay they're still insulated and if you look up here this is an often uh, a case of shorts where the wire has got the casing the insulation rubbed off it and they will short together if the brown one shorts on the earth or the uh, neutral, then that will blow a fuse. Better to have armoured cable like this. However, this is really expensive stuff. OK, so the business end, and this is the delivery of the welding uh, currents. You have a factory a three metre cable and the earth is always shorter. I made some up which are 10 metres long. Now, this was to reach the roof of a trailer because I couldn't get the welder up so high. So I made these cables up. And checking the rating on here, this is actually 25 millimetres, which has a certain current rating. And we're going to talk about those. 
The other thing I want to say, the longer the cable, then you are going to have voltage or, or current drop in it, and you have to then accommodate for the uh, voltage amperage or turn it up a little bit when you're welding high up. So 25mm cable, which I've used, has a load capacity of about 140 amps. Okay, when you're welding 5mm uh, steel, for instance, anything's thicker, then you've got to think about something else. The next one up is a 35mm welding cable, and this will have a load capacity, or maximum load capacity, of 200 amps. Now consider this, you might not need to use it when you're domestic welding. And the other one here is a 50mm cable, now we're getting into uh, thick battery cable sizes. This is a 300 amp. And of course, obviously, the, um, the thicker the cable, the less resistance you're going to have, they're not going to heat up, and you can carry a current without voltage drop. But they are very heavy. Believe it or not, the uh, little SIP welder that I was using did have battery cables on it at one point, which was almost impossible to hold the electro holder in place without having the cable over my shoulder. Now, I did make the cables up, and you can see it's easy to hold it with the cable not interfering with the control of the electrode. Something to consider, obviously. The factory size is 25mm, as you can see the cable is the same size as the ones I've made up, so they will only rate it at 140 amps and no higher. So as Land Rover owners we know all about bad earths and bad connections, it's the same with welding equipment. Um, you could consider this a battery terminal to start a motor connector if you like. It has to be tight and it has to be clean and you should always check this when you're welding because if it shorts out it will darken and you lose your current and it's also the same on the positive side. Okay, this one was actually loose and this is just for uh, transit. Make sure they're always tight and no loose connections before you start welding. Okay, so the earth clamp, yeah, it's an earth clamp. That's an earth clamp as well, but that one's pants and that will just cause you loads of trouble. This is for domestic welders. This one is for the serious welder. Now, these have more of a contact area. You should always make sure they're clean. And this is the uh, band or the braided part, which... Um, joins them both together so you are spreading the load. Make sure your connections are tight, again for the same reason, that the cable is in good condition as well. Um, Earthside is not so important because anything it sparks out on will earth it anyway. But these are rated, now you have a 200 amp earth clamp, croc type, which is rated at 200 amps surprisingly, and this is the minimum you want to have. And then you can have a larger one which is rated at 400 amps, which of course is bigger. And if you're using larger currents, then use a larger clamp. It makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so the twist type electrode holder, these, well, you can buy them and then you fit them to your cable yourself. Now they have a uh, grub screw type fitting, always mechanical fittings, and never sold any weldering cables together. The only maintenance with this is to run a small file in where the electrode makes contact. Right, so the XTT202, these are bayonet type fittings, you push and turn. Okay, push and turn like that. These, again, are grub screw fittings, and as I said, you do not solder cables to uh, any type of thing because of the resistance that can occur in the cables. They get hot, and then the solder melts. Now, to believe it or not, these do come loose from time to time, and it's always good to check, tighten them. With this one, it's been delivered to me, and I've used it a few times, and it's come loose. So never, never, ever trust anything, any assembly person on a line, especially if it's a Friday afternoon. So always be aware of this. This is just a heads up for maintenance and to make sure that you're welding without any interruption, because the last thing you want to do is to uh, sort your machine out, isn't it? Okay, there's a little bit of an extra on this video, but what I'd like to do, and this is an appeal to you guys, I'd like to thank the people who have already donated to us on a monthly basis of at least £1 a month to keep the LRTV going, and this is quite important because we have quite a lot of mileage yet to do. What I'm asking you to do is to pledge £1 or £1.25. This will help us to keep you in the workshop to get you back on the road. Right then, getting back to uh, welding equipment, I've already shown you the state of this cable on this little uh, buzz box, as I say, or an AC uh, 
Man U Metal Arc welder. Now, I would be concerned I'm going to get this changed as soon as possible before I use the welder again. Now, the other thing I didn't say is these terminals here do come loose from time to time, so make sure you check the nuts and make sure it's all clean, and this will give you a life full service. These welders are actually very reliable, and you can pick them up um, reasonably priced second hand. Right, so um, this one is actually uh, a single phase and a three phase welder now i can turn it on to 240 volts because it's set like that but i cannot turn it on to three phase it's blocked because of the switch inside which is this here now this is a changeable there is some plates and you can adjust it so you can get three phase but do you need it for domestic welding i doubt it however this has run on three phase easily one thing that does happen to these little boxes is um, the adjuster gets stiffer and stiffer through age and this is mainly due to corrosion. Now I showed you the white bar and this I've got at higher amperage but going down to lower amperage you'll probably notice already that there's rust in the thread. Now I turned it so far and it actually unscrewed, the knob unscrewed itself. So I'm stuck between a certain voltage range. Now if you can see the rust in here, this is obviously being kept in a damp shed at some point. I don't know if you can see that. I'll just move the wire out of the way. You can see the corrosion there. Okay, so there's a solution to this. It's very simple. You just clean it and then lubricate it. Couldn't be simpler, could it? But you'll find people don't actually know what's going on and they complain that they can't get it. It is because of this problem. It's very common. Now, the lubrication I'm using is a special one from Corollus and it's supplied by Arkwright or you can get it from Buzzweld. This is CCI 355 and this has corrosion inhibitors in it. So not only will it lubricate, but it will stop it from going rusty any further. So it's basically clean the threads, lubricate them, and then work the shunt backwards and forwards. Also, the shunt has two slider plates on this one, and it's getting a little bit sticky. Um, I'll just clean that off, and then when it's clean, just stick a little bit of Vaseline on it. Generally, plastic is self-lubricating, but uh, sometimes it needs a little bit of help to go its way a bit better. So this basically is already sorted. Now the other thing you should consider is while you're in there just check your cables to make sure that they're all tight. Make sure that there's no chafing and the insulation is okay, especially at points where it becomes very close together. You can see those there. And uh, basically, yeah, there isn't much more to this. If the transformer's knackered, then that's the end of it. But these are very reliable. Now the switch contacts obviously you check it with it switched off and I've got it unplugged as well safety feature just make sure all the contacts are all right the earth for the mains is loose so this needs another nut and bolt to make sure it's bolted to the welder chassis properly another little hint if the welder's packed up completely and it's not the fuse then it could be this black thing on top which is a thermal overload sensor now these do go wrong uh, basically it will cut the current to the switch so it's something just in case you need to know these are domestic type welders They're, there's probably one in every shed in great britain uh, it's just a hint to let you know that the common faults are what i've just shown on them